In Cyberpunk 2077, the mono wire is very, very underrated because maybe you missed something. Dear comrades, Ivan the German is back for you guys and today I have another best builds in Cyberpunk 2077 video staring with the mono wire and the mono wire is very underrated because a lot of you guys didn't notice that the mono wire is a blunt weapon. Yes guys, it's right, this weapon is a blunt weapon. And I guess a lot of you guys missed that and skilled something different, maybe blades, and you missed the street brawler abilities, but those abilities are incredibly important for this build. So, the mono wire is basically the same playstyle with the katana or mantis blades or whatever. You are combining the cool skill tree with your blunt weapon skill tree, the street brawler, and you reach very high damage and you are very fast, your survivability is very great. Even you can combine your body stuff with your weapon stuff, that's very handy in terms of survivability and in terms of efficiency. And the mono wire is one of the coolest looking thing in Cyberpunk 2077. Another thing for the mono wire, you can block with it, you have light attacks and strong attacks, but the mono wire has a great range compared to katanas or other blades. It has a great AOE range to hit and kill some enemies. Even cameras can be destroyed very effectively because your mono wire is silent and you have a great range. And that's why I like the mono wire. But, and there is a big but, you can't make a nice stealth kill with the mono wire or whatever. It's sadly not in the game that you can use your weapon to make some stealth kills. Of course, you can make your strong attack and one shot the enemies, but it's not the same as a dedicated stealth kill for your stealth approach. And that's sad because a lot of guys think that the mono wire in Cyberpunk is the same thing like the wire in Hitman and it's basically not. Maybe you're struggling with Cyberpunk 2077 and if you want to be a better gamer, subscribe to the Inside Gaming channel. We will help you that you have a better game experience and become a better gamer. As always guys, let's start with the cyberware and we have the visual cortex support which increases your crit damage by 16%, this is the uncommon version and 60% is nice and you can have I guess 30% with the epic version, nice to have, definitely check out if you can buy or afford it. I have the legendary limbic system enhancement which increases my crit chance by 25% and with the mono wires it's the same thing with almost every melee and a bit sneaky stealth build go for crit chance and crit damage to finish your opponents quite fast because your attack speed is not that bad your strong attacks is also not that bad go for the fast attacks as always i have my heal on kill and instantly restore six percent health after defeating an enemy it's nice because you can kill a lot and you have to get a little bit closer with the mono wire but not as close as with the katana or other melee weapons because the mono wire has a bit of a range also very nice is the bio monitor you get 50 percent health back when your health drops below 15 percent the adrenaline booster instantly restores 40 percent stamina when you defeat an enemy nice to have the cutter resist means you have a bit more resistance and that means your survivability is a bit higher and in almost every build I'm playing right now, the nervous system is one of the most important ones. Let's start with the Cybernetic Accelerator in the legendary version. You do not need the legendary version. Just go with the common or the uncommon version. It's enough for the beginning. But the Cybernetic Accelerator slows time by 50% for 4 seconds. That's the bluish thing you can see if I'm entering a combat. That's the bar when the enemy detects you and it's incredible strong and in combination with the Kerensikov it's incredibly strong and the legendary Kerensikov slows down by 90% that's huge also to increase your survivability I have a little bit of armor the subdermal armor is nice put whatever you want you don't have to have the legendary version and if you need more power go with the Zandivistan, it doesn't matter if you have the legendary or not, or you can go with the Berserker, both are great, but the Zandivistan has the benefit that enemy takes 70% more time to notice me, while Zandivistan is active, I have more crit damage and I have more crit chance, I'm restoring health, while Zandivistan is active, also 50% crit damage by using this mod. And of course the mono wire itself, that's the basic thing for your build. I have the legendary version, I will show you where you can get the legendary version for free. Do not spend 100k, it's behind a garage in the middle of the city. I will put a short clip that you can see where you have to go. Right now you can see where you have to go, it's behind a garage. It's easy to find and you can get them very very early on and a legendary in this caliber very early on is pretty strong. And with this additional chance that you can burn your enemies, your enemies are distracted and you can deal and handle them quite easily. 
and we have more crit damage by 10% and of course you can put some another thing but you don't need it. Last but not least I got a double jump. The double jump is quite nice because your approach is completely different and that gives you whole new options. So for the skills and as I said the mono wire is a bland weapon. That's why your street brawler abilities are the most important ones in combination with your cool tree. So let's start with the first one, increases damage from combo attacks with blunt weapons by 50%. As I said, the mono wire is a blunt weapon, 50% more damage. Increases damage with blunt weapons against enemies affected by a stun, 50% more damage. And you can see you can increase your damage quite easily with stuns and all of that stuff and that's how your mono wires are doing this huge damage. You can see I'm level 10 with my Street Brawler because I'm only almost every time using blades and I don't get it why this sharp mono wire is a blunt weapon but we don't have to understand Cyberpunk 2077 so we have to deal with it. So the next one trash. Strong attacks with blunt weapons reduce the target's armor by 30% for 10 seconds. That's nice because your approach should always be a strong attack with your mono wire. You do tons of damage and you're reducing the armor from your opponent. Defeating an enemy increases damage with blunt weapons by 100% for 10 seconds. That's incredible strong because you can one shot or kill quite easily the first enemy because you make a sneak or a stealth attack or a stealth approach and after that you get 100% more damage. Payback increases damage with blunt weapons by 3% for every 1% of missing health. That's the exact same perk like in the blade build. The efficient blows, it's nice to have reduced the stamina cost of all attacks with blunt whips by 50%. As I said, nice to have if you have some points. Relentless, successful attacks with blunt weapons against enemies affected by a stun restore stamina. Also, nice to have, you shouldn't have that much stamina problems. Successful attacks with blunt weapons against enemies affected by a stun restore 50% health and 15% stamina. And that's incredible because your attack speed is quite high. So, and that's why you need dazed. All attacks with blunt weapons have a 30% chance to apply stun. As I mentioned, with stun you get a lot of benefits. So for annihilation, the speed demon, you deal more damage the faster you are and you have tons of movement speed, so get the speed demon. Then the ski shooter deal 50% more damage to moving targets. This is like easy 50% more damage for almost nothing. The manic, when entering combat your movement speed increases by 20% for 10 seconds. It's perfect with the speed demon. So the pack mule is a basic perk, increases carrying capacity by 60, means you can loot much more. Then we have the steel and chrome, increases melee damage by 20. Sprint does not drain stamina, nice to have. And because you have such a high body attribute level, you can use the steel shell, increases armor by 10%. And the indestructible reduces all incoming damage by 10%. That means if you're entering combat and you want to run around, rush a little bit, make your stealth approach and then you get detected or then you are running around, reduces all damage and more armor, gives you much more survivability. Especially if we take a look into the Cold Blood skill. It's a little bit messy, I know, because I can't respec. You can use the Tabula Rasa, which allows you to respec only once. I'm sorry, that's a little messy over here, but I will explain everything you need. The Cold Blood perk gives you movement speed after you're defeating an enemy. Three stacks. 2%. You increase that with the Unbreakable and the Coldest Blood, you get two more stacks. That means you have five stacks. Then you get a Predator, increases attack speed by 30% per stack. That means 150% more attack speed. Imagine that with your Mono Wire. It's crazy. And that's why I'm so fast and that's why I'm hitting so much with the Mono Wire and almost every melee weapon, like you see in the video. Furthermore, the Cold Blood has a lot of survivability. Like Pain is an Illusion, reduces damage taken while Cold Blood is active by 5%, increases armor by 20% per stack and you can combine that quite good with your body skills. This one gives you a max stack of Cold Blood automatically, maybe if you made a mistake or maybe if you enter a boss fight, it's not bad. Landing a crit has 25% chance of applying a stack of Cold Blood, that means you can get your Cold Blood a little bit faster. Increases all the resistances by 5% per stack of Cold Blood, again survivabil survivability. And again, survivability is a huge thing in cold blood. But we have the blood brawl which is very important for your mono wire while cold blood is active increases damage with melee weapons by 10%. And you should combine the stealth perks into your build because increases your crit chance by 50% while sneaking. That's what I mean with your stealth approach or with your sneak attack. Go into stealth and make a strong attack to hit quite harder. Combine it with increases movement speed while sneaking from the crouching tiger and upon entering combat crit chance increases by 50% for 7 seconds. Hasty retreat. Temporarily boosts your movement speed by 50% for 5 seconds when detected by an enemy. And that's what I mean with 
make a strong stealth approach with your strong attack and after that you are very fast and you get a lot, a lot, a lot of buffs. Ghost detection time is increased by 40%. You can combine that with some takedowns and after you did a takedown, you have increased movement speed. It depends on how you play. But go with the ninjutsu. Crouch attacks from stealth with melee weapons deal 100% more damage and guarantee a crit. That means go into a crouch, make some sneaky sneaky stuff and make a stronger attack with 100% more damage and a guarantee crit hit. That's incredible. Ninjutsu is one of the most important perks to get. Death cheat is to improve your survivability. When health drops below 50%, reduce all incoming damage by 50% for 10 seconds. That's very handy to live longer. Assassin deal 50% more damage to human enemies. Almost every enemy in Cyberpunk is a human. In Blades, you could go for the slow and steady. Armor is increased by 30% while moving. You are moving a lot because your movement speed is quite high, but all the other things are not so necessary because your motor wire is a blunt weapon, not a blade. That's basically it for the cyberware and the skills. As always for the gear, I would recommend play what you like. Maybe you are min-maxing something, go for the crit damage, crit chance or attack speed or movement speed. Of course you have a lot of nice legendaries with more crit damage, more crit chance or you should play with a good looking character. It really depends on you. If you have trouble or if you have any problems in Cyberpunk, which you shouldn't if you're following a good build, go for some more crit damage and some stats you need or just have fun in Cyberpunk. So what is the playstyle and a short summary of the mono wire? The Monowire, as I said, is very similar to the Katana Blade build. You are using your stealth abilities in combination with your Street Brawler and Body Skill Tree to get the most damage out of it. Your movement speed is quite high, your attack speed is quite high, and you can have a lot of fun with the Monowire. Do not forget, the Monowire has a great range compared to your blades, or if you have a blade build, the Monowire has a bit better range, you can turn off cameras better, and it makes a lot of fun to play with the Monowire. And if you like what you see, leave a like to this video to show the world we Germans can do at least something. And if it's your like, I would appreciate it that we can show it to the world. See you in the next video guys, bye.